right, so check this part out. This thing's 16 inches in diameter, made out of a solid piece of ductile iron billet. Now the piece of billet is gonna weigh 360 pounds, and the finished part is only gonna weigh 39 pounds. So we have hundreds of pounds of material to get off of this part. Now when you're faced with medium to large parts, something that you have to consider is when you should rough use in an end mill and when you should rough use in a high feed mill or face mills. Now we went with a high feed mill here because in my past experience, I've had times where an end mill will get halfway done roughing a part and then the end mill snaps and you've ruined your part or you have to pick up again from the beginning. So check it out. I wanted to stop at this halfway mark so you guys can kind of watch as the part takes shape. And that's one of the coolest things about being a machinist is you get to see the part actually start to form out of your raw stock. Now you may notice too that I cut flats here on four sides of our stock. That's the nice thing about having a four jaw chuck is that now this piece of stock can't possibly spin on us. Oh yes, ductile iron chips of greatness. Let's go make some more. inch 7792 high feed mill that we're using, I know those inserts are going to last this whole part and probably four or five more. So I have a more stable process that's going to be more predictable and that's how we're going to start this part off is by high feed milling all the outside shape of the part. Now as we start roughing this part, another thing that we're doing is we're sticking to just three axis motion. Now you'll notice that this is polar interpolation so the part is turning but that's still just three axis motion. Now the reason that we did this is because most five axis machines are gonna be more rigid in the three axis orientations. So if we take a look at our tool path from our four inch high feed mill, you'll see we came down below the bottom of our part and faced the top and we did all the machining that we could reach between the fins and everywhere. So our very next operation is gonna to be to come in with a smaller high feed mill. So we're using our two inch dodeca and we're gonna get all the stuff that the four inch couldn't reach. After we rough the outside shape of the part, we're coming in with a two and a half inch drill. And you may remember this drill, we nicknamed it Godzilla in a previous video, but we're gonna come in and just drill a hole straight through the center of our part. Now the reason that we're doing this is so that we get good chip evacuation when we go in and start roughing the ID of the part with our end mills. Did you guys just see that? Well, you wouldn't have, except we just got these new RotoClear cameras. So these things are pretty cool, right? They got this glass disc on the end of them that's air driven. So the centrifugal force blows all the coolant straight off the lens. Ooh. Spinny, spinny. Now, as we start roughing the ID of our bore with our end mills, you'll notice that we got a pretty good healthy step over here. That's 30% radial. <laughs> TE is hands down my favorite end mill on the planet. So I know it's gonna be able to do that. I could probably go up to a 90% step over, but our second end mill is sticking out quite a bit, four and a half inches. So I wanna make sure that we have a good stable process again, and we actually make it through the roughing without any incidents. Listen to that cut, it's beautiful. You know, we've had this machine on our floor for a little while now, and this is the first actual part that we're making. The CP6000 is like the ultimate combination of power, torque, and accuracy. I love it. So here you see our tunable holder in our two inch low deck of high feed mill. The cool thing about 
this tool is that there's an adjustment screw on it that allows us to control the harmonics that are going through our cutter body and through our tool holder. Now for a tool that's sticking out almost 12 inches, this thing is gonna sound fantastic compared to what you would have if the holder wasn't dampened. Again, this was another nice thing about using that two and a half inch drill to drill straight through the center is that all of our subsequent tools are able to plunge straight into that hole and then start working its way out towards the ID of the bore. Now something that I really like about this machine is that we have so many options for how to process this part. There's a lot of stuff that I could have done using turning, but I'm a mill guy at heart, so anytime that I can mill something rather than turn it, I usually do. Now an interesting fact with this part, so far I'm only through the semi-finishing of the program. But if you take a look here at our feature tree, we actually have hundreds of tool paths that we have to get through. So stay tuned and we're gonna show you guys some super cool stuff. Get some! Oh yes, check this bad boy out. Now, we got this whole part roughed to this state in about 30 minutes, so that is efficient roughing. And now that we have almost all of our three axis stuff done, we're gonna get into our three plus two and our full five axis stuff in our next videos. So remember, if you see this part in the thumbnail, make sure you click and check it out because we're gonna show you guys some really cool stuff. I hope you guys liked today's video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys again next time. Yes! Oh, yes! Oh! Get some. I like it. What the? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, take that, Trevor. Oh, I can feel it in my toes. It's like a free foot massage. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a rib, baby, right round, round, round. I'm happy. <laughs>